It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Wow. And from a thousand Americans are dying today. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. But so I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. It's going away now. It'll go away. Things go away. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, I, I think that's enough, right? I think that's enough. Hey, I want to just, uh, I want to make sure that you guys uh, just keep your thoughts and your prayers to yourself, motherfucker, okay? Keep that shit to your motherfucking self. Keep all of that shit up. Oh, oh, this is what I think. If you're going to say, if you're going to say, oh my God, oh, oh my God, the president has uh, COVID, uh, he tested positive for COVID, and here, here you are making light of the situation. Oh, wow, Hassan, so disrespectful. Fuck you! Suck my entire cock, you stupid, pathetic little fucks. This is my message to all the Republicans out there who are going to be looking all around the internet to try to find people that are celebrating this, okay? That are celebrating this because they're the left. They're so terrible. They're so awful. So here's what I got for you, okay? Suck my dick. Let me say it with my chest again. Suck my cock. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Oh my, Hope Hicks, what a legend. What a fucking legend. God, I love Hope Hicks. I need, ha I need fan cams on Hope Hicks pronto. What an incredible moment of karmic justice for people that are responsible for so much death, destruction, devastation, like single-handedly responsible for it too. For those people to turn around and get that same disease, my lord dude what happened is it no longer fake news is it a real virus now or is it a fake virus turns out maybe mask wearing was a good thing who knows maybe you should be socially distancing maybe you should be quarantining maybe you should be engaging in contact tracing measures here are the cabinet members and others around trump who have been tested so far opix donald trump's top aide where this story begins. You know what, actually, let me just go through the story. Ladies and gentlemen, there needs to be a recap. There needs to be a recap. And before you guys talk about how like, oh my God, this is fake news. What if Donald Trump's doing this to get out of a debate? Don't be fucking silly. Don't be silly. Okay, stop. This is not a time for conspiracy theories. A brief moment of solace that we all have where we can collectively take a deep breath and say, maybe there is some karmic justice. Now, do I believe that personally? Absolutely not. Uh, I think that Trump is as strong as a goddamn ox. I will be honest. I think that Trump will very likely survive this, just like Boris Johnson did. Just like Jair Bolsonaro did. As a matter of fact, Jair Bolsonaro, recreationally, I think, gets COVID now. I think he literally goes to hospitals to see if someone has COVID so he can get it again. Very weird, but I'm not going to kink shame. Knowing what I know about how there is no justice in the world, uh, I don't think Donald Trump will suffer despite the fact that he's 74 years old and obese and definitely has high blood pressure. I, I don't think that those comorbidities will end up biting him in the ass because uh, he has the best kind of taxpayer-funded health care that anyone on the planet could get. Round-the-clock doctor coverage. You know, things that he doesn't want you, the American people, to have. Things that he hasn't even personally paid into. That stuff. You know, because he paid $750 in federal taxes. OPIX, one of President Donald Trump's closest allies, tests positive for coronavirus on Thursday. OPIX is on Air Force One. Apparently, she starts developing symptoms on Air Force One. They try to quarantine her on Air Force One. This is information that came up after. She's been closely right next to, right up Donald Trump's ass, nonstop. And I mean, to be fair, who wouldn't want Hope Hicks up their ass? I, Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm going to keep simping for Hope Hicks. Oh, Trump's reaction to Hope Hicks is live on Hannity? What? I did not. You're so right. You can't say it any better than that. So this... she did test positive. I just heard about this. She tested positive. She's a hard worker. A lot of masks. So she wears masks a lot, but she tested positive. And I just went out with a test. I'll see what, you know, because we spent a lot of time, and the first lady just went out with a test also. So whether we quarantine or whether we have it, I, I don't know. You know, it's very hard when you're with soldiers, when you're with uh, airmen, when you're with uh, the Marines, and, uh, I'm with, and the police officers, I'm with them so much. 
And when they come over to you, it's very hard to say, stay back. Stay. You guys make fun of me for doing fan cams. And then we're watching Sean Hannity do that, but on national television, by the way. Stay back. You know, it's, it's a tough kind of a situation. It's a terrible thing. So uh, I just went for a test, and we'll see what happens. I mean, who knows? But you know Hope very well. She's fantastic, and she's done a great job. But it's very, very hard uh, when you are with people from the military or for law enforcement and they come over to you and they they want to hug you and they want to kiss you because we really have done a good job for them and you get close and things happen i was surprised to hear with hope but she's a very warm person with them and she you have to treat our people great you can't just say stay away bro he just can't stop himself from kissing and hugging law enforcement officers like you know they want to kiss hope picks they want to touch her they want to kiss her they want to fondle and what are you gonna do Sometimes I do too. You can't blame me. It is what it is. If Hicks was contagious and testing positive as of yesterday, Trump is contagious and testing positive as of today. Then 100% he did not catch it from her due to the five-day incubation period. He probably got it a week ago. We know this. The whole uh, the whole Oval Office probably has it. Yeah, they partially traced it back to the ACB Rose Garden event. Oh, hey, this is the event. This is the this is I saw this. So. Oh my God, dude. Maybe the Protestants were right. Catholics are fucking sinners and uh, God despises them. I've been telling Jack all week. <laughs> it seems to me like God is punishing the Catholics. <laughs> God is like, yo, the Supreme Court has too many of you motherfuckers. We're not letting this happen. <laughs> Notre Dame president who refused to mask, uh, wear, uh, wear a mask also got it from this event. Yeah, 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 I know. Notre Dame president John Jenkins interesting who was at the white house scotus announcement on saturday was criticized for not wearing a mask and shaking hands is tested positive for covid 19. this was just sent out to the campus unclear if he had it during the white house event during self-quarantine this week university of notre dame resident reverend john i jenkins csc learned that a colleague with whom he has been in regular contact has a positive for covid 19. oh my god oh my god it was this guy oh uh, oh yeah ronna mcdaniel the chairwoman of the rnc has also tested positive for the coronavirus i mean dude honestly the good Lord giveth and the good Lord taketh, okay? I, I'm, I'm in a real spiritual mood lately. And goddamn, dude, I mean, what is happening? Amy Coney Barrett might have it. Like, because she was literally touching and kissing everybody in that fucking event. Congress needs testing, not a partisan topic. Mike Lee with Amy Coney Barrett this week. He was around all of us reporters too. This is crazy. Now, the people I feel bad for are actually the staffers. Like, if we're going to talk about who I should feel bad for, who I do feel bad for, I feel bad for the staffers. I feel bad for the fucking service industry people that have been around them, the drivers, the even the White House press corps. Fuck it. I'll even include the Fox News journalists in that because they didn't even tell them. The funniest part about this, like, there were journalists on Air Force One. Joe Biden, today, this morning, literally kicked out or sent back one of the journalists that's on the campaign trail covering him right now because he was on Air Force One. And they didn't even let these fuckers know. They didn't even let these journalists know. Uh, Mitch is plowing through the, with the Supreme Court nomination even though a Republican fucking senator is positive. Oh, yeah. Of course he is. They, if they, because if they hold this back and what if Donald Trump dies? What if a bunch of Republican senators already have it? He has to do this. Kind of ironic since your whole chat wants Trump dead. Bro, there is a difference between, like, it's like wanting Hitler dead, okay? First of all, no one wants Trump dead. Everyone is just excited at the prospect that like there is some karmic justice for a guy who has literally been personally and single-handedly responsible for so many people dying from coronavirus because he wanted to fucking uh, act like it wasn't a serious thing and take the appropriate measures. So you're, you're out of your fucking mind if you think that this is like not a hilarious and totally appropriate response to a dude who has killed so many fucking people. And he's not going to die, by the way. He's not going to die. I'm just letting you guys know bad things never happen to bad people. Okay. It just does not happen. Donald Trump is not going to die from coronavirus. Boris Johnson survived. Bolsonaro survived, as I said earlier, and Donald Trump will most likely survive it as well. Despite the fact that he's older than both of those guys and a lot less healthy than both of those guys, it still doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, President Trump threw MAGA hats at supporters at a rally in Duluth a day before announcing he was diagnosed with coronavirus on Twitter. Yeah. And he was supposed to go to Wisconsin. Every part of Wisconsin where he was supposed to have a rally today, he was supposed to have a rally in Wisconsin today. Every mayor was like, no, like, don't come. We are now seeing a second peak of coronavirus cases. Please don't come here. Everywhere he tried to uh, hold a rally, we're like, no. 
and he was still going to do it. And the only thing that's preventing him from going to Wisconsin now is literally because he has fucking COVID. Anyway, if he dies in the next few days, will Pence be the new nominee? Yes. And if Pence has it and he is incapacitated, then it's drum roll, please. Nancy motherfucking Pelosi, who takes over the government. I hope you know that. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Mike Pence is negative, of course. I know Mike Pence is negative right now. Fox News is rotating the three photos that exist of Trump wearing a mask. Honestly, it's hilarious. Bro, that's so funny. It's like all from the same event, too. Like he wore a mask twice, I think, and it's all from the same event. This is great. A mask like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. How are you not going to fucking look at this and go, that's, that's uh, totally deserved? I mean, that's just two days ago, okay? That's two days before he tested. And he has consistently done this on the main stage over and over and over again. I mean, he is a piece of shit. And it has caused a tremendous amount of harm. Mask right here. I put a mask on, you know, when I think I need it. Trump also shared a tweet claiming that masks aren't about public health, but social control. And that the image of Joe Biden wearing one endorses a culture of silence, slavery, and social death. So many different viewpoints, the president added. President Trump went so far as to retweet uh, this man in, in a Florida bar. Take a, take a listen. I'm at a bar restaurant. Uh oh, wouldn't want the commies in blue states to see us Floridians all out at bars having a good time with no face masks. Might destroy their narrative that everyone's gonna die if we don't live in a bubble forever. I'm having a good time. Not a single face mask. It's not that bad, guy. Listen to me. This is a compilation of videos that shows you why, if you're not afraid of like Nazad or Karma coming back to you because you wish ill upon someone else, because these are interesting times, or even I feel a little spiritual and I have never in my entire life felt this way. Outside of that purpose, you can absolutely laugh your fucking ass off at this because. This dude has, is responsible. Like, he is just responsible for the death and destruction of so many people. I mean, come on. So don't even, for a brief moment, feel bad. Don't let any liberals try to tell you you should feel bad about this. Don't let fucking Rachel Maddow tell you, like, we need to pray for his safety and, and wish them a, 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 you know, immediate recovery. Obviously, if I was Joe Biden, if I was in his shoes, I would say exactly what he said, wishing for them to have a speedy recovery or whatever, and then and then keep campaigning like a motherfucker. Will you consider a national mandate that people need to wear masks? No, I want people to have a certain freedom. Look at how wet this fuck looks. And I don't believe in that, no. And I don't agree with the statement that if everybody wear a mask, everything disappears. Hey, Dr. Fauci said don't wear a mask. Our Surgeon General, terrific guy, said don't wear a mask. Everybody was saying don't wear a mask. All of a sudden, everybody's got to wear a mask. And as you know, masks cause problems too. A lot of people don't want to wear masks. Are you worried at all about your supporters being exposed to COVID? No, because uh, my supporters are very smart and they do. A lot of them wear masks and some don't. That's their choice. And uh, no, I, I think we have a very safe environment. I have 25, 35,000 people show up at airports. We use airports. Are you not worried about the We have disease a lot issues, of people. Sir. Well, so far, we have had no problem whatsoever. If we take a look back at Monday when the week began, he had two events at the White House. Whoa, that's sick. What is this? What is this whip, dude? What the fuck? They were allegedly offered masks, but refused to wear them. Take a listen to what he said on Fox News. Oh, yeah, that was a beautiful they moment. Trump's they literally offered Trump's family and Trump's uh, team masks, and they were like, no. Because, again, it's a moment for them to keep promoting this notion and why were they doing this why were they doing this there has to be a reason right like why are they jeopardizing their own safety well partially because like everyone around them gets around the clock testing so it's the safest way that you can propagandize that coronavirus is fake or rather that coronavirus isn't fake anymore because you can't say that anymore obviously 200,000 fucking people have died they've turned a corner on coronavirus it's the optics of like trying to reinforce that message because that's what trump saw as his only pathway to success. The only way that he can potentially scrounge up as many votes as possible to fucking win was by stating that coronavirus is actually, we've turned a corner on it, that it's no longer as bad and the economy is recovering. So this completely destroys that narrative when he has it, okay? Uh, when they sat down, they weren't wearing masks. I'm told <laughs> by the pool of reporters who was there that somebody from the Cleveland Clinic came up to the first family, I believe this was before Mrs. Trump sat down uh, and offered them masks in case they didn't have them and they waved them away. 
Now, the following day, after the debate Wednesday, Trump was travelling again. He was in Minnesota for two events. One was a fundraiser at a private home and also this outdoor rally. Uh, we know Hope Hicks was on that trip. She had tested negative in a COVID test that morning, but she felt unwell as the evening went on and she actually isolated herself aboard Air Force One. Uh, that evening, returning to Washington, then took a new test and got that result back, coming back positive and announced yesterday morning. Now we know the White House knew of that result yesterday morning. We don't know if Trump knew about it himself because he continued traveling. He went to- That's the most insane part about this. You guys understand that, right? That's the, that is where things take a turn. This is the moment where you recognize that there is this blind loyalty, that, that conservatism is a death cult, right? Because what you're supposed to do in this situation is like, Oh no, immediately we have to like make sure that we, we shut off all the other events for the rest of the day. We have to isolate immediately, figure out which one of the staffers actually have it as well, who contracted it. Like, but because of their sheer loyalty to like the cause, like because they actually practice what they preach in, in a weird way, they followed through and Trump actually put 30 to 50 of his top supporters in New Jersey at risk by going to a campaign. Uh, going to a, a, a fundraising stop in his own motherfucking golf course. Now we're at Tuesday, right? Tuesday, September 29th. Because the pandemic, Trump and Biden did not shake hands. Luckily, holy shit, they also were 10 feet apart. Holy shit, thank God. At one point during the debate, Trump mocked Biden for wearing a mask, as you all saw. Uh, on Monday, Trump held an unexpected event on the South Lawn of the White House where he met with workers from Lordstown Motors and touted the work being done there. Lordstown Motors is a small automotive startup and has drawn national attention for his elective pickup truck, electric pickup truck, which is pretty cool. It does look cool. I did not know what this was, but I like it. Trump later appeared in the White House Rose Garden to hail a new testing strategy for coronavirus. I say it all the time. We are rounding the corner. Yeah, maybe not. Then we get to Saturday. He introduces ACB as his nominee. This is where people think that a big spike may have occurred. Barrett is one of our nation's most brilliant and gifted legal minds. This is where they were all fucking kissing and hugging and, and handshaking with one another. Amy Coney Barrett has tested negative for coronavirus. So has Mike Pence, by the way, at this stage, letting you know. Oh, fuck, we're going backwards. I thought we were going forward. Anyway, this is, what am I doing? We went, uh, we talked about the debate. Okay, Wednesday, Trump travels to Minnesota for an outdoor rally in Duluth and does a private fundraiser in Minneapolis. This is where OPIX allegedly, or according to reports, this rally, after this rally and this fundraiser, on the way back, Hope Hicks developed symptoms. As he departed the White House, he report, the reporters, he told reporters he was getting a tremendous reviews about his deba debate performance with Biden. I thought it was a great evening. It was an exciting evening. He said, I see the ratings very, very high and it was very good, therefore felt very uncomfortable. Thursday, Trump was last seen in public on Thursday afternoon, returning to the White House after a fundraising trip to New Jersey. So like, Hope Hicks developed symptoms on the flight, on Air Force One. Then she gets tested, is found positive for coronavirus. I don't know if the Trump campaign immediately knew that she had coronavirus, but they definitely knew that she had symptoms and uh, apparently they made her isolate on the plane. I don't know how well you can do that, but I guess you could probably do it a little bit better than mother fucking uh, like regular commercial flights. The plane also, Air Force One also had journalists on it. They don't tell the journalists that Hope Hicks is developing symptoms. They don't tell anybody that Trump continues on, goes to New Jersey to do another fundraising trip. This is like the most insane part about it. He did not appear ill, though he did not speak to reporters as he walked into his residence. Late Thursday night, hours before announcing his diagnosis, Trump tweeted that Hope Hicks, one of his closest aides, had tested positive for COVID-19. Kaylee McEnany did not attend this uh, trip. Kaylee McEnany did not let anybody in the White House press pool know about this. They did not tell anybody about this. Most journalists that were on that flight found out about it from the fucking news. After Donald Trump tweeted that Hope Hicks had tested positive for coronavirus. Immediately, the speculation then is, as I also tweeted out, he probably has it. He probably tested positive and they're waiting for a second uh, test to see, to, to solidify, but they're isolating immediately and they're quarantining immediately because he tested positive. And they announced that they have tested positive early Friday morning at like around 2 a.m. or something for like East Coast time. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together, President tweeted shortly before 1 a.m. Eastern time. The White House has already canceled several Trump's events Friday, including a fundraiser in Washington and a campaign rally in Florida. So this is the sequence of events. Oh. So now that we went through, now that we parsed through the sequence of events, let's talk about the speculation. The, the irony here is like, even in that moment of celebration, I got so many fucking text messages last night. And the first thing was, how will this somehow be good for Trump? Because a lot of people that look at this stuff do not even at this stage especially if they're like super tuned into it even at this stage they don't they're like i don't even want a moment of celebration here i don't want to even feel happy or comfortable for even a brief moment because 
I know that this will somehow fire back on the Democrats. The worst thing that will happen, if it does happen, of course, if Donald Trump recovers quickly, he will just say, see, I told you I've defeated the coronavirus. It's not that big of a deal. And that will absolutely have a terrifying effect on all of the MAGA sickos who already think it's a hoax. He'll also say he took hydroxychloroquine. That is probably what's going to happen no matter what. That's the worst case scenario. Well, that's not the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is he did give it to Joe Biden, even though Joe Biden tested negative earlier today. Uh, it, it's still in the incubation period, so it's not showing in his, uh, in his blood, but inevitably uh, it will kick in and Joe Biden absolutely will not survive coronavirus. Like Donald Trump very likely will survive coronavirus. Joe Biden very likely will not survive coronavirus. Like, let's be real. That would be the worst case scenario. But no matter what happens, this still hurts Donald Trump. One, because he got it, okay? He got it, so it's impossible to avoid. It's impossible to consider it a hoax, a full-blown hoax anymore. So that is huge. But most importantly, this kicks him out of commission. This decommissions him for, at the very least, two weeks. He can't do in-person events. He can't do campaign rallies. He can't do anything. And when you're decommissioned for an extended period of time, 30 days out from an election, you're fucked. That's not good. That's demoralizing. Without a doubt, terrible for your, your prospects. If you're trying to raise money, why the fuck would anybody give you money if you're, you literally may or may not die at this circumstance? This is awful for a momentum. No longer able to campaign. It's, it's uh, truly, 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 truly devastating for the Trump campaign regardless. So for all of you guys who are saying like, oh, this is a conspiracy. He doesn't have it and he's faking it for sympathy. No, because the negatives of him having COVID far outweigh the positives that you are speculating that he might get down the line. It, it's, it's absolutely like this is not something that they would lie about uh the last question he asked was how is the market doing but he absolutely did develop symptoms he'll he'll do virtual rallies or some shit certainly and those rallies will do well we will obviously restream those and we will watch those and we will make fun of them but let's be real he's not fucking going out and like actually doing in-person rallies he's not doing in-person fundraiser uh, fundraising events he's not going to be able to put out a strong show of force. What about the narrative that he got it recovered quickly because he's a bull and the virus is a joke that bolsters a bullshit narrative? That could happen. It did happen with Boris Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not entirely certain on what his, like, uh, what his poll numbers look like after he recovered. No, Boris Johnson didn't get a poll boost from catching Corona. I reminded all Americans that the net effect of our prime minister catching COVID-19 was that it prompted a surge of patriotic support from which he emerged with a renewed popularity, which enabled him to tear up key functions of the state. No, so sir, to draw that conclusion, Johnson and the conservatives were doing extremely well in the polls shortly after his diagnosis. Haven't been doing less well before, uh, shortly beforehand. Here's the chart. The problem is that shortly before and immediately before are not the same thing. And the circumstances in the early part of 2020 contributed to the difficulty and distinction between the two. Two separate polls by us and Openium, Openium done before Johnson announced his positive test on 27th of March, put the Tories on 54 with a 26 point lead. We had him on 72% satisfaction. Yeah, if his poll numbers dipped, because you have to remember, one of the key indicators of how a president is doing and his approval rating in this circumstance is, is how well they dealt with coronavirus. This is pre-coronavirus. This is the pre-peak of the pandemic. This is the time when Boris Johnson was saying, take it on the chinny, bro. Uh, perhaps you could sort of take it on the chin, take it all in one, in one go. And Those numbers had to have fucking absolutely dipped in the UK because of the mishandling or because uh, people were made aware of the damaging outcomes of mishandling the coronavirus pandemic. And we are in the post-coronavirus world where Donald Trump getting coronavirus now is not going to lead to a rallying cry of sympathy for him because we know how devastating it's been for so many people, so many communities. So I don't believe that it's a one-to-one, -one, uh, it's a one-to-one -one comparison that you can make. Lowest point, 13th of April, and then his, his disapproval increases and his approval rating dives, takes a fucking nosedive because people started recognizing right around this area what the fuck COVID was doing to the country. We are in the post-pandemic world where people who support Donald Trump love him regardless and they're always going to approve of him no matter what. They'll increase their sympathies. Maybe some moderates might actually sympathize with him or whatever. But the fact that Donald Trump so routinely not post, we're in the middle of it, but like post peak, him getting coronavirus, I don't think, and this is a speculation, but I don't think we'll actually boost his poll numbers all that much. Fox and friends on him recovering quickly. Yeah, take it to another level. Sure. People think, and there's a lot of people out there that says, if I get it, I die. Uh, look at this, uh, 7 million people have it, it's, it's terrible. 
Now, what if the most famous person in the world gets it and in 10 days is back out? Doesn't that also send a message that you could say whatever you want in stats and graphs, but I give you an example of somebody yep. who is in that danger age of 74, who is out there, gets it and beats it? Could that also send a message? It could. It could. That's a, that is a distinct possibility, Brian. But I think the immediate reaction on many people's part will be, my goodness, if the President of the United States can get it, maybe I can too. And right. I'm going to be more cautious. I'm going to wear a mask more often. And I'm not so keen on opening up the economy and going out to restaurants and bars again. A worse thing could not have happened to Donald Trump. Listen, I'm Mr. Pessimist, okay? I am Mr. Worst Case Scenario all the time. And I already gave you what the worst case scenario is. Even in the worst case scenario, with the exception of like Joe Biden getting it and then dying, outside of that, this plays super poorly for Donald Trump in the short term and all the way leading up to an election that is 30 fucking days away. And to the people who think that like, well, this is good because like this could be good for uh, Donald Trump because then, you know, maybe Mike Pence becomes the president functionally and then he starts campaigning on his behalf. Fuck no. Mike Pence doesn't have enough time to fucking secure a winning coalition. And Mike Pence doesn't have the same bona fides that Donald Trump has that appeal to that base. Because of Donald Trump and his charlatan nature, the Republican Party has, fortunately for us, but unfortunately for them, whittled away at their main base. And that base is literally being held together by one charismatic leader, and that's Donald Trump. So if he goes away, that is deeply demoralizing. Those people aren't gonna fucking go out the bat for Mike Pence. Don't be crazy. Mike Pence doesn't have any of the qualities of Donald Trump. Moderates won't fucking, even if moderates turn around and they're like, well, now it's Mike Pence, so I don't feel as bad voting for him. That still doesn't matter because there aren't enough moderates that would actually do that. And even if there were enough, there isn't enough time for Mike Pence to be able to win them over. Yeah, this is a significant downside of strongman systems, exactly. This is why people always say, once Vladimir Putin dies, the Russian economy is going to tank in its entirety. Kind of a similar thing with Erdogan as well. When you put together these systems and you hold it together with fucking glue, pretty much, when you hold together, when you are the only charismatic leader holding together the entire structure. When you die, it's over. Everything falls apart. There is literally a fucking power vacuum in the aftermath of that. So what you're saying is this is just more Joe Biden failing upwards? Absolutely. This is a, a godsend. This is God's gift to Joe Biden. I don't know what the fuck Joe Biden has done in his, in his life to deserve all of this, but he has literally failed upwards the entire time. Only guy who could secure the, the black voting bloc in the South, the Southern firewall. So everyone had to, every other much better candidate had to fucking throw their support behind him to make sure that they defeat Bernie Sanders in the primaries. And then you have a devastating pandemic that destroys the global markets, a pandemic that makes it so that Joe Biden literally cannot campaign. Like it turns his biggest weakness into a fucking strength. Can you imagine all of the things that have happened for Joe Biden to win? And then literally when poll numbers start, when, when Americans start forgetting about all the casualties of coronavirus and they start looking forward and Trump's approval uh, ratings start going up again and the race starts getting uh, the race starts tightening. Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies, which is good for Donald Trump overall. And then Donald Trump gets COVID. Like literally the October surprise is unnecessary because Donald Trump got fucking COVID 30 days out from election that renders him incapable of going out and campaigning and brings back coronavirus to the forefront of the conversation. Do you understand how devastating that is? One of the most devastating consequences of Donald Trump having COVID is that now we're talking about COVID again. Now this is real again. Now to all the guys who were like, oh dude, COVID is a hoax, whatever. We're, we're ready to move on from coronavirus. We're, we're actually turning the corner and it's back with a motherfucking vengeance and in the worst way possible, in the most embarrassing way possible. Things could not be better for Joe Biden. I do not understand how the cards lined up for him throughout this entire process where the only bar that Joe Biden has to clear is just not die. As long as you don't die, you win. Literal easy mode, yeah. Joe Biden is running this campaign in journalist mode difficulty. It's crazy. Apparently, Mike Pence is going to go out and campaign for Trump. Trump campaign, all events featuring President Family postponed after COVID-19. Pence to continue campaigning. Great. Pence, under any other circumstance, Pence is like a Mitt Romney type. So that's great. Mike Pence going out and campaigning on Donald Trump's behalf will have the opposite effect. Mike Pence is incredibly boring. 
like incredibly fucking boring. And for a lot of people, the reason why they love Donald Trump is because he is a vector for all of their frustrations, their anxieties, their anger, able to deliver that with showmanship. And Mike Pence will not be able to do that at all. He is an out of touch Koch brothers plant within this administration. He is basically like Mitt Romney. He will demoralize the base that is being held together by Donald Trump's personal charisma or the personal blind loyalty that they feel to Donald Trump. One curious quirk is that the 25th Amendment is invoked so Pence becomes acting president. It means the VP president of the Senate role is vacant, changing the math of the tight Senate vote. That would be fucking awesome. Now Mike Lee is sick too. Mike Lee is also sick. And if uh, Mike Pence is no longer, if uh, after the invocation of the 25th Amendment, if Mike Pence is no longer the tiebreaker in the Senate because he's no longer the VP, he's the acting president, and Mike Lee is sick, there is a likelihood that Mitch McConnell won't be able to whip the votes. I can't wait for some like fucking Republican adjacent Democratic senator to like turn around and be like, oh, well, I'll, I'll do the honorable thing and I'll vote for Amy Coney Barrett. <laughs> Here's yet another reason why you should never, ever, 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 ever in a million years ever take re Republicans seriously when they try to do that fake moral outrage shit and say like, oh my God, how fucking disgusting that like, how disgusting that like liberals are making fun of Trump for getting COVID after literally denying it and like causing hundreds of thousands of people to die as a consequence of denying it and also not taking the necessary mitigation efforts, spread mitigation efforts, and literally not even doing the doing that this far out of the pandemic and, and potentially giving COVID to so many other people, even after finding out that he has COVID or someone close to him had COVID. So uh, fuck you, first of all. I just want to say fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You don't deserve an ounce of sympathy and neither does Donald Trump. Suck my dick. And also this. Hillary Clinton had like a pneumonia attack or some shit after she uh, collapsed at the 9-11 memorial. This was exactly one year ago. Exactly one fucking year ago, this was Donald Trump talking about Hillary Clinton having pneumonia. But here's or, or not one, one year ago, sorry, four years ago. What am I saying? <laughs> sorry. I don't know why I said one year ago. Exactly four years ago. I, I really should have slept uh, more last night, but I was too excited. She's supposed to fight all of these different things. And she can't make it 15 feet to her car. Give me a break. Give me a break. Could you imagine if Joe Biden mocked Donald Trump getting COVID? The hilarity here, of course, is that, uh, you know, if Donald Trump had never gotten tested, we wouldn't even know about it. So why is he getting tested? You are so fucked up, man. That's why your mom loves me, dude. Okay. The guy who said you're so fucked up. Time to fuck these people, far away National Guard. Yeah, exactly. The same people that say you're so fucked up for saying this about Donald Trump are the same people who are like, oh, black people, shoot them on sight. Like, that's literally, there is no, I will never, ever, ever in a million years ever feel bad. Apparently, according to Josh Letterman, five minutes ago, Trump has low grade fever. This is reported live on MSNBC. Update from the White House dog on his treatment. Physician to the President of the United uh, President uh, to White House says, Sean P. Conley. So, so I released the following information with permission for President Donald J. Trump. Following PCR confirmation of the president's diagnosis as a precautionary measure, he received a single 8-gram dose of Regeneron's poly polyclonal antibody cocktail. He completed the infusion without incident. In addition to the polyclonal antibodies, the president has been taking zinc, vitamin D, famotidine, melatonin, and a daily aspirin. Also, where is the hydroxychloroquine? And bleach. What is this? Don't look at this. You will mauled. Always remember the survival rates for this virus per the CDC. 70 and over, 94%, 94.6% survival rate. I would put the POTUS in the 20 to 49 category due to his strength and stamina. <laughs> Yo, I love these people, dude. I mean, this is North Korea shit, okay? Like, we have literal fucking psychos on TV. Like, no, our supreme leader is so mighty. He's like an ox. He's like a bull. His dick is so hard and so strong. Please look at Ilhan Omar's response to Trump. My statement on Trump's COVID... As someone who lost my own father to this virus and I've seen the pain it causes, I do not wish it on anyone. Over 200,000 people have died while this administration actively ignores public health guidance and suppresses science for months. We have been hoping for a simple acknowledgement from president to hear the words, we will get through this together. And now we only hear those words when it's about him, not hundreds of thousands of people who have lost their lives and the millions whose families have been touched by it because of his malfeasance. Their cruelty is a direct threat to my constituents. This week, the president held a rally and fundraiser in Minnesota flouting the guidance of his own health agencies by failing to wear a mask. In doing so, he exposed hundreds in a state that is already suffering from an uptick in cases. Republican members of our congressional delegation traveled with him on Air Force One 
and have not quarantined. In fact, they came to the Capitol today, risking the lives of an additional elected leaders and staff. The President of the United States and Republicans in Minnesota are actively spreading a deadly virus. They are a risk to the public health of my constituents and our country. God damn, that's so good. Oh my God. Be a pull report. Trump is going to Walter Reed. Two sources of familiar with the plan. He's fit to undergo tests. Oh no. I'm fucking Matthew McConaughey smoking like... <laughs> Give him that hydroxy, baby. Give him that fucking hydroxy. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh God. Oh, this is so good. Oh fuck. White House. Trump to travel to the military hospital after COVID-19 diagnosis. Remain a few days on the advice of doctors. Oh God. Oh God. Oh fuck. He hasn't fucking... He hasn't tweeted. We're now told by a spokesperson over at the White House that the president will be working from offices there at Walter Reed over the next few days. Our Jeremy Diamond. These are her words. She says President Trump remains in good spirits, has mild symptoms, and has been working throughout the day out of Wait. an abundance of caution. And at the recommendation of Wait, his physician that? and medical experts, the president will be working from the presidential offices at Walter Reed for the next few days. President Trump appreciates the outpouring of support. My man's like, what's up? Y'all didn't even fucking honor my memory at the RNC. After being diagnosed with COVID-19, President Trump departs the White House for a multi-day. He's looking good. I can't see his dumpy though. This is fake. This is not Trump. It's a body double. This could literally be the last moment that we see Trump walking. It could be the last moment we see him in public. Now it also, there's a likelihood that it won't be. Probably even a higher likelihood that it won't be. But just think about that for a brief moment. It's history. No matter which way you cut it, no matter what your take is, no matter what your opinion is on Donald Trump, if you're here because you're devastated, you're sad that Donald Trump is is on the verge of death because you think he's a great leader or you're here because you want to watch a fucking liberal confirm your biases about how aggressive and non-tolerant and intolerant the left is no matter which way you cut it this is history in the making boys we are currently watching actual history that will be written about in the history book totally unrelated to this but i feel very happy no idea why ne definitely not because of this uh same uh, i just i feel elated i feel excited but it's of course not related to this at all it's just uh it's a good day today listen the only annoying part of this the only annoying part of this is that like now they're also babying fucking like now the bar is set as low for donald trump as it was for joe biden you know what i mean like literally walking is now considered a, a moment of profound strength thank everybody for the tremendous support i'm going to walter reed hospital i think i'm doing very well but we're going to make sure that things work out. The First Lady is doing very well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will never forget it. Thank you. Uh, he doesn't look that bad. We wish, you know, we do pray. And, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with the President and the First Lady of the United States. I talked to him about conservative values. And Joshua Flores is sending Trump, his but prayers, but tells me the President's positive test won't change his mind about wearing a mask. I can't put a mask on, and I won't put a mask on. That's just my personal opinion. You know, um, I, I'm gonna take a, uh, I'm gonna take a line right outside of the Planned Parenthood's little guidelines. Is you know, it's my body, my choice. What the fuck do I say to that, dude? How do you fix that, dude? Will you change those habits now that the president and first lady have tested positive, or no? I will not. Um, I. I'm a firm believer in Jesus Christ. He's a healer. Up, oh, another Republican senator down. Senator Tom Tillis. Also, there's positive for COVID-19 in his office. Says Tillis is a member of the Judiciary Committee. Was at the White House SCOTUS event on Saturday. Met with Barrett on Wednesday. Oh, no. I mean, it, it's actually remarkable. It, it went from, like, absolutely no one had COVID to, like, oh, shit, literally everyone is on the verge of death. We might get more senators testing positive. In this political dude, I love this. Okay, here's what here's what's so funny to me. The the funniest and best part about this coronavirus news, aside from you know the obvious parts, is that like every news outlet literally looks like a hitman intro. They have like hit lists of like all the all the people that may or may not have it. Like this literally looks like Agent 47, your mission, spread coronavirus. At the Amy Coney Barrett nomination ceremony, we have pinpointed all the GOP senators, as you can see. Your target is Mike Lee and Melania Trump. The White House inner circle will be in the front seat. All you need to do is sneeze on them. Like, look at this shit. Like, they're having a lot of fun. Uh, the HHS secretary said this morning 
that we're ramping up. We're ramping up but with the commercial not? labs. Why didn't they do it while it was contained? Get ahead of it. It is being contained. And do you not think it's being contained in this I'm country? I'm not a doctor and a lawyer. Well, but you said, you said it's not being contained. So are you a doctor or a lawyer when you say it's not being contained? That's the false. You just spreading. said something that's the, not true. The virus is spreading. There's Trump supporters outside of Walter Reed. It's right now. My thoughts right now is that Trump is in his 70s, you know. He is at risk, but he's taking it like a champ, you know, compared to what a lot of other people would say. So that's... Motherfucker's still not wearing masks, bro. Still not wearing masks, bro. Are you fucking crazy, dude? I mean, daddy's in the hospital for that reason. And you know, I have to ask the question, why aren't you wearing a mask? Well, I'm young and I'm not at risk for COVID. So with the survival rates that we've seen, um, it's frankly- My man is literally like, I mean, he's such a fucking, I just want to work at CPAC so bad. That's the whole vibe that this guy has. The whole energy that this guy has is like, please let me get a job. Oh, new Donald Trump tweet. Going well, I think. Thank you all. Love. Wait, the fuck? Why is he tweeting like a fucking pop star, dude? Bitch, you have COVID. And you're the president. Also, why did you say I think? What a weird fucking tweet, dude. I love this. I love people writing like this shit under all of his, uh, all of his tweets. He's on a perk. He did not write that tweet, let's be real. Yeah, I don't think so either. Bro, my man did one debate with Joe Biden and he died. What the fuck? All right, anyway, I'm fucking tired. Chat, I love you all. Like nearly 10 hours, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a night. Imagine a leaked pics of Trump on a ventilator. You'd fucking come, dude. No. I would come to my senses as I am a sensible liberal who would be terrified and devastated by seeing someone suffer so much, that would be horrible. I would be 